In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to our online liturgy. Today, we celebrate the 30th Sunday in ordinary time. Let us quiet our thoughts to allow ourselves to be in the presence of the Lord. You were sent to heal the contrite of the heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on peace, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall not abuse any widow or orphan. If you do abuse them, when they cry out to me, I will surely heed their cry. My wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to my people, to the poor one among you, you shall not deal with them as a creditor. You shall not exact interest of them. If you take your neighbor's cloak and pawn, you shall restore it to that person before the sun goes down, for it may be their only clothing to use as a cover. And what else shall that person sleep? And if that person cries out to me, I will listen for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. In spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned from God to idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus was a person who knew how to go to the heart of the matter. This capacity of Jesus to get to the heart of the matter is clear from his response to the question put to him by one of, by one of the Pharisees in today's Gospel reading. Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? In the time of Jesus, there were known to be 613 commandments in the Jewish law. Jesus answered the Pharisees' question by going straight to the heart of the Jewish law. He was asked if there was one greatest commandment, but he replied, but in reply, he named the second greatest commandment as well. For the first commandment, loving the Lord your God with all your heart and soul is inseparable from the conjoined commandment of loving my neighbor as myself. For Jesus, what God wants from us above all is love. There is no genuine love of God unless it finds expression in love of our neighbor. Love of neighbor, in turn, presupposes a healthy love recognizing and appreciating myself as fundamentally good because I am created in the image and likeness of God. We all know from catechism class that God gave Moses 10 commandments. But in the centuries after Moses, Israel became dissatisfied with just 10. Like children who argue against their parents, the people of Israel nitpicked the Ten Commandments in order to justify themselves and their actions. So the leaders of Israel added smaller ones and more particular commandments in order to prop up the Ten. By the time of Jesus, the common teaching of the law of Israel involved 613 commandments. From the commandments that deal with loving our neighbor, the Jewish scholars of the law produced 14 particular commandments about business practices, 
19 about employees, servants, and slaves, 36 about courts and judicial procedures, and 11 about property rights. Yet that doesn't exhaust the commands to love our neighbor. When you turn to loving God, the list of commandments are even longer. With 613 commandments, it was easy for the average Jew to lose focus. Jesus wanted to bring a focus to God's command to love him first and foremost. You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. But it's interesting what happens next. The scholar of the law didn't ask Jesus which commandment in the law is the second greatest, yet Jesus tells him anyway. Maybe you know people who answer your question like this. You ask them one question, but they give you a different answer to the question. God is like this in our prayers at times. God always answers our prayers, but he doesn't always answer them in a way we hope. Sometimes his answer doesn't seem to correspond at all to what we were talking to him about. However, when God changes the subject of the conversation, maybe it's better to turn the conversation over to him and spend more time listening. In today's gospel reading, when Jesus gives the answer to a question that the scholar didn't ask, he makes it clear that the second greatest commandment is very important. Reflect for a moment on the Ten Commandments. Out of the ten, the first three are about loving your God, and the latter seven are about loving your neighbor. Why are there more than twice as many commandments about loving your neighbor? than there are about loving God. It's not because loving your neighbor is twice as important as loving God. More likely, it's because loving your neighbor is twice as difficult as loving God. The Bible tells us to love our neighbor and also to love our enemies, probably because they are generally the same people. Why so often are our neighbors also enemies? In the second greatest commandment, when Jesus commands you to love your neighbor as yourself, he is not using the word neighbor as we might be tempted to do. We, in our fallen human nature, want to shrink the meaning of neighbor to as few people as possible. So you may not include people that just cut you off on the road today. That is why Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan, so that his followers would see every human being as their neighbor, including a stranger on the side of the road. So the second greatest commandment is to love every human being as yourself. That's very difficult. It's impossible to carry out without divine grace. To love is to follow the spirit of the law. To love is to fulfill the letter of the law, circumventing its intent. To love is even to go beyond the law, because the law is only a guiding point in the direction that love will take us. Love isn't meant to tell us where to stop. If we listen to Jesus, love is the point at which we start. Together, as a community of faith, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Trusting in God's merciful love, let us bring our prayers today. For the church, may God help us remain faithful to all of his commandments and grow in the fullness of the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those in positions of power, may they be given prudence and courage in serving with justice. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill with the virus, may Jesus, the divine physician, offer them hope and providing healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For this gathered assembly, may the love and truth that God has poured out into our hearts sustain us in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have gone before us in faith, may they enjoy eternal peace in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uniting all prayers together, let us now pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, and what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have a wonderful weekend.